Okay guys, uh, let's continue our solution to the uh, last problem we solved. So let us uh, solve now requirement C uh, in which uh, we are asked at one point are the stirrup no longer required theoretically. So before we proceed with the calculation, let's look into this figure here wherein there are three graph of uh, shear equations we have no? so this uh, red graph here which has an equation vux equals r1 minus wux actually represents your factored shear forces um, which is actually measured from the left support up to the point where uh, the shears become zero. So this is actually uh, at the mid span. Okay. So for the second graph of the shears equation, uh, this uh, curve here, which actually uh, represents a flat uh, line, and then suddenly has a uh, uh, decreasing value here which is uh, uh, negatively uh, decreasing in slope okay is actually the equation in which uh, uh, the representation is is a detailed equation in this uh, form given by the equation here okay so this is the equation that uh, we refer to as your uh, detailed uh, equation. Okay, and for the last equation here, which is the green one is the simple equation we use uh, on a day-to-day -day basis which is a simple simple equation uh, given to us by the ACI or the NSCP in this form so this is now actually your uh, a simple shear equation okay so we, we will now be solving the the uh, possibility of the point of intersection using both the detailed and the simple equation based on the reference uh, equation which is the factored shear equation here okay so we know in our elementary uh, algebra and calculus that whenever we want a point of intersection we simply equate okay the uh, working equation that represents both the detailed and the factored equation and the simple and the factored equation so for your letter c this point uh, x here which represent the intersection at which uh, the detailed equation and the factored shear equation uh, meets actually represents the point at which uh, the stirrup are no longer required uh, beyond this point so it simply means that uh, beyond this uh, line here okay so beyond this line Uh, stirrups are no longer required but of course so we are only talking about theoretical situations okay 
So in actual practice, we still have to uh, put uh, some stirrups for purpose of uh, increasing our safety, our factor of safety. Okay? And also here, in this simple equation, the point in which uh, uh, beyond which stirrups are no longer required actually is referred to this line here. Okay? So that is the physical interpretation of what we are going to do uh, in this next uh, uh, computation. Okay, remember that uh, this point now is simply the point which is the mid-span of your simply supported beam. And this is exactly at L over 2 distance, which is uh, 3 meters. Okay, so take note that to solve the distance x from the face of the support, we simply equate the shear capacities, which are the detailed and the simple equation uh, of shear, with that of the factored shear equation, which is in the form R1 minus Wux. Hence, if we do that, we simply uh, get the detailed equation Vc, which is in this form, okay? And then uh, equate it. Of course, we have to multiply this later with phi, okay? But before we do that, we simply uh, take note of this value here, and this value here uh, simply represents your reciprocal of the A over D ratio, okay? So this, this uh, uh, value here, is actually the the uh, uh, VUD over MU okay, that we are computing, okay? And of course, um, we take note that your value of VU and MU must be computed at an unknown distance of X, which is the uh, required. Uh, uh, variable in this particular problem. Okay, so we cannot get an absolute value for your VUX and MUX. Rather, we will be having a value which is in the form of a function of X. So VU at X distance is simply R1, which is 360 minus 120X. Okay. And take note that, again, the moment at that point can also be uh, computed by simply getting the area of the trapezoid. So this is now uh, the area of the trapezoid uh, that represents, okay, your moment at the point in which the stirrup are theoretically not required. Okay, so area of the trapezoid. Okay, so this is one half of your VU maximum and the VU maximum here is simply the reaction. Okay, so this value here for this particular case is simply your R1. And then the value here is simply the value of the shear that we have computed on the basis of this equation at an unknown distance of x. So we just uh, plug it here. Okay, so uh, mux is vum max, which is 360, and then vux is 360 minus 120x uh, times quantity x. So I think I have an error here in our last video wherein I substituted a value of the length uh, equal to 12. No? So that's why this is this became 720 so, and that is uh, actually wrong. Okay, uh, Because I use L equals I think 12. Okay, so this is wrong. L is only 
uh, 6 meters. So I apologize for such uh, error. Okay. Okay, so uh, BWD here is actually given, so we have no problem with this. And of course, uh, we do this by simply, uh, we have to simplify this further uh, using algebra, but since I'm using MathCAD, I don't need to simplify it. So if you are using a powerful calculator class, uh, then um, I think uh, this is also manageable. So all you have to do is to equate this phi, okay, VC. So I now uh, uh, inserted or substituted the value of phi VC here, okay. And then my VUX is substituted here, okay. So I equate it. So if you don't have a calculator, you need to simplify. But since I have a powerful tool here in MathCAD, I simply equate them and uh, just make a command to find x by assuming x equals 1. Note that x is in meter now. No? So in this uh, unit, my x will be automatically yield the unit of meter. So I get 1.923. Okay, so uh, in your exercise later, I want you to do it uh, manually, and if you have uh, some problems with it, we can discuss it. But for now, that's not important. What is important is for you to, to know the principle behind uh, answering the question uh, in, inside the problem on this context, okay? So uh, note that if you use a simple equation, the calculation will be simpler. So in here, I use a simple equation uh, instead of the detailed equation. So I just plug in 1, 6, 1 over 6 square root of FC prime BWD times phi. I get 1.86. And this can be solved uh, very easily by solving this value. And then we can take note of x is simply equal to Okay, phi times 1 over 6, all, all are given, f prime c, uh, bwd, okay, uh, I think this is uh, negative, so let's put this on the other side, okay, so x is equal to 3, 160 minus divided by 120 okay okay so this is minus p so you just get uh, this value and you will obtain 1.86 Okay, and the values are not uh, very far from each other. Uh, taking note that uh, um, the error is all, only very small. So that's why in a day-to-day -day basis, the simple equation can be used as a reference equation. But uh, if you have a, a good uh, tool, a program, you can better off solve uh, the problem using the detailed equation. So again, at, uh, uh, at what point is the minimum air stirrups, uh, AV minimum uh, is required? So what happens is the procedure will only shift from considering one half of the detailed equation. So I have here a dotted, uh, a dotted uh, curve and a dotted line. So this represents one half of the detailed equation. Okay, so this uh, this value here, uh, this uh, dotted. Okay, let, let's put it here. Okay, so this equation here is simply one half of phi VC, where VC is the detailed equation. Okay. 
So instead of having a full value of the capacity, we get one half. Also, for this uh, straight line, this green here, okay, this green. Uh, okay, so let's put it here. This, okay, let's use another color. Okay, so this represents one half of VVC, where VC is the simple equation. Okay, so again, uh, what we will be computing now are no longer this X, but rather this X. So I will uh, shift my X from here. It will now be measured. Uh, up to here okay so my X will be extended there quite longer and my X here will be extended up this okay so these are the new point of intersection that I'm computing on the basis of the AV requirement okay so this is now uh, solving for the AV minimum requirement. So if you are asked, where do you place the minimum requirement? It is beyond these two points that at least the minimum requirement must be satisfied. Okay, the dotted lines are one half the values obtained from the shear equation, which are the detailed and the simple shear capacities. Okay, so all you have to do again is just to plug in your value of dc and v but this time you just divide it by 2 is equal to vux okay so take note uh, the procedure is the same except for the uh, capacity which is uh, taken in terms of one half vvc okay vu is still the same mux still the same only here in the in the equation again we consider one half of vbc so using again a mathcad tool i obtained from the uh, detailed equation a value of 2.49 so this is in meters okay so this is already in meters because your x is already in meters there Okay, so this is in meters here. Again, this is your uh, consideration for your uh, detailed equation. And uh, note that if we use again the simple equation, the, the calculation above will be much simpler. And you can calculate this uh, manually very easily by again um take, taking into consideration only one half of this value okay so how do we do it so x now is simply equal to uh, 360 minus uh, phi over 2 okay so we have a 2 there and then 1 6 square root of f prime c b w d okay and then divided by 120 okay and that will give you a value of 2.43 okay so uh, that's it for letter c and d they are uh, almost similar only with some consideration in the code requirement that they became different so thank you for now we will be uh, discussing the requirements for letter E and F on the next uh, video. Thank you.